It's been a while since I last used Star Eaters and they've been kind of retired because of the nerve they received way back to when they were first released. They were absolutely busted on day one, but they made Hunter's super builds that focus on damage alone extremely useful in certain damage phases. GMs, Nightfalls, Raids, Gambit, you name it. The exotic did some justice to the Hunter class until they got adjusted. Now I don't see them as much as before, but they still are relevant and aren't as useless as you may think. Let me ask you a question, have you tried out the Devouring Deaths mod with Void 3.0 yet? If not, I'm going to show you why you should be using it and why you need to use them with Star Eater skills as you can reach up to around 300 to 600k in damage via your Mobius Quiver. Now, I'm not great at maths, but 300 to 600k in damage via a single super is quite a lot, no? So if this has piqued your interest and you want to pull off these numbers as well, you'll just need to do one thing for me first. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications for future releases. That's all you need to do and I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using the newly updated Mobius Quiver for its 2 burst damage and effectiveness against bosses to mini bosses. It's similar to how we did the Orpheus Vig build, it's a little big damage coming after the third shot. Ours will be condensed into the first shot and then the last shot will be normal damage. This can vary at times and only if you manage to hit the requirements needed for this, but if you manage to land the first hit with the full buffs, then you're on the right track. Aspects wise, we have the Stylist Executioner, where defeating weakened, volatile, suppressed, etc. targets will make you go invisible, but will also grant you the ability to weaken targets via your melee when the buff is active by 15%. You would then want to have Vanishing Step ability so that every time we dodge we can go invisible. Nothing too complicated here, but you'll want to rely on your visibility as much as you can so you can safely pull out if things get too heavy. From here, you then want to have Echo of Remnants Fragment which will increase our grenade duration, Echo of Undermining where Void Grenade weakens targets, Echo of Reprisal where defeating combatants while surrounded will grant you super energy, and then Echo of Starvation which will grant you the Devour Perk. Now this one perk is very important if you want to maximize your damage to its fullest, so you need to be very prepared when the time comes. Next you want to focus your stats into discipline and intellect, with discipline at 80 to 100 and intellect at 50 or more. Ideally if you have the frontal wisdom mod then you can leave your intellect stat at 50 because of the bonuses the following mod will grant once active. The idea here with the mod is to get your super up as quickly as possible so you can put the damage phase with or without the need of the devouring death mod. So next we have elemental ordnance which will allow you to proc wells which will feed back into your abilities. Bountiful well will extend this further. Volatile flow will allow you to turn targets into very volatile void bombs and devouring deaths will grant you 30% super damage increase once devour is active. Simply you want to focus on getting your super up as quickly as possible and then build up the buff for Star Eaters up to times 8. Once we have achieved that goal, all we need to do then is proc Devour and extend it by a few extra seconds, and then boom, presto, you have deleted a boss. It sounds easy, but it's very hard to pull off if you don't have the combatants nearby to activate Devour or if you end up dying. Generally, even if you die and lose all your buffs, you're still put in around 200k damage, which is still ahead of a lot of damage to begin with. That's why on the Hunters it's a lot more easier to pull off so you can rely on your visibility to get out of danger if it gets too much. Now as you can see, I do not have any damage resistant mods like Well of Tenacity or Protective Light, so I have to be very careful in terms of how I do things. But when you pull it off right, then you'll know you're on the right path. So weapons, what's the deal with them here? Ideally you want a weapon that has Void and has Substance on it and maybe a weapon with Demolition on it as well. I have two weapons for that and the first one is the Ragnar D with Substance and Demolitionist, which makes a great pairing for allowing users to consistently build grenade energy back per kill made. Although a discipline stat is pretty high to start with, it's also quite nice to have it as a backup in case things don't go as well. You also have Substance which will majorly help with non-stop firing and less panic involved. Do try and grab one from Banshee as it's an absolute beast of a weapon to have on you as spare. In secondary wise, we have the Funnel Web SMG with Substance and Adrenaline Junkie, and like mentioned before, you want a fast firing weapon with a Substance perk, and you'll be pairing this up with the Harmonic Cypher mod to create orbs of power. With all these in hand, you can keep firing as long as you like until you can't fire anymore, and then collect the orbs to increase your super damage. Any void weapon with the perk is fine, but if you don't have one with the following perk, 
then I don't need Kinetic Sight for mod instead, as Kinetics have a much bigger pool to work with. Crate, the new AR or Huckleberry Exotic are two weapons I can see working out really well for the following build if you can't get a funnel web with the following perk. Heavy wise, we have the Deathbringer rocket launcher for its high damage on a singular or large area of use. Very useful as you can fire and forget the weapon while we're using our super at the same time, so by the time your rocket's damage kicks in, you would have done enough damage via super and have them debuffed and then ready to be destroyed by the heavy. Alternatively, the Red Herring Rocket Launcher is a good choice if you don't have the exotic and want to have a customizable role as well. For our stats, as mentioned, we want to have both intellect and discipline to be our main focus of support so that our build can be powerful as it needs to be. Having a high discipline stat will allow us to proc wells, debuff, and increase how fast we can get our super up and running and you may want to adjust this depending on your situation. We have already mentioned how elemental ordnance and bountiful wells will play a part in a build and we also have the demolition perk with the high cooldown, so all you need to add here is the distribution mod and then call it a day. Your intellect stat however is a bit different. I have mine at 70 but this is because of armor stats alone which I wanted to try and avoid. Ideally, try and get this down to 50 and have the frontal wisdom mod as I'll provide you with a plus 50 intellect on top of the 50 you have as well, so overall 100. Having that will be much more efficient and easier to manage since you don't need to worry about grinding out armor for the following high set alone. Once this is done, you'll then want to have Ashes to Ashes mod as backup so you can build up your super alongside your exotic, which will also be enhancing the amount of energy you get back from them. If you can get your intellect to 80 or 100 alone, then you can take out the Funnel Wisdom mod for the Funnel Might mod and use that to enhance your avoid heavy weapons damage further. This can be very useful in the new raid against the bosses as you can dish out heavy damage there and then. The rest of the stats can stay how they are as nothing else of importance really matters here. Although, you could also swap out Volatile Flow for Wild Tenacity if you want some extra defense for safekeeping. This would be more ideal if you play Master or Grandmaster content on a regular, but the choice is ultimately yours. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For Head, we have Discipline, Ashes to Assets, Harmonic Siphon and Battle for World mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastball and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Cuckus of Dampner, Firma Shot Plating and Volatile Flow mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Rocket Scavenger, Invigoration and Frontal Wisdom mod. Cloak, we have Discipline, Distribution and Devour and Deaths mod. Now, let's break down how the build works as it's simple to understand but also a bit hard to pull off. So to start, the main focus of the build is to get your super up and get your Star Eater's Feast of Light perk going. This perk will need to reach times 8 stat for that 70% increase in super damage if you want to maximize the damage to its fullest. Now that's the easy part. The hard part is getting Devour and Death active and then keeping it active so you can get that 30% on top of your Star Eaters. If you can survive the Onslaught or Combatants and extend your Devour Fragments just long enough and then do the damage, you can pull in some very insane numbers against bosses to mini bosses alone. I tried to build out on the Wellspring boss for the attack version as I wasn't satisfied with how it played out the first time I tested it on some scorn bosses. I got 94,931 times 3 plus impact damage of 55,842 which came out to around 340,635 in total. The second attack after that came to 76,022 times 3 which is 228,066, which in total comes to around 568,701, roughly 600k in damage. That was pretty much one third of the boss's health gone in an instant, which is nuts as I only had a second to use Devour before it disappeared. But 500-600k in damage with this setup isn't anything surprising, as this can be done with other supers as well, such as the Warlock Noble Warp version. For the Hunter slowly, this can mean light and day in terms of eating through bosses health quickly, so you don't have to expand on using all your abilities and ammo. Take the final boss. Doing that damage while everyone else chucks in their super will definitely allow you to get a two phase on him if everything goes as planned. And even if it doesn't, then just having your super up and ready is still enough. I was pulling off 200k plus in damage alone with the super, and this is all thanks to the Mobius Quiver debuff becoming active and increasing the damage we did. I've done around 100k in the first volley of a super against the score mini bosses on preservation mission and it nearly one shot them after full super was used but I was just a bit off with using it. 
Either way, the build hits like a truck and the fact that we can do so much damage within just one hit is fascinating to do. The only issue though with the build is pulling this off successfully, since not all boss rooms will allow you to build up all the power and devour at the same time. You also got to remember that the moment you die you lose everything and you have to start again, which is a very steep cost considering that 8 stack is a lot to work with. You have to really make sure everything is in line before trying to attack, as one mistake will cost everything. But don't worry, with how the build is designed, you can rest assured that this will come through to you, and as long as you play it safe and don't rush, you too can delete bosses within a single super. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.